Hey, Lynn, how's it going? Lynn Doing Williams, great. right? Yep. Awesome. And you're from Page Lynn, South Carolina? Yes, sir. Awesome. So you're here in Castleberry, Florida today, and we are going to run treatment on the Mighty Mike Killer on three colonies today. That is correct. So uh, we'll kind of take a look over here. We've got many colonies, and uh, these are all from the same genetics. They were all brought in at the same time. So we're basically going to do an experiment where we run treatment on three colonies, and we don't treat three colonies. We're going to do our sticky boards every seven days. For 72 hours, we're gonna count our mites and we're gonna see what results we get. So uh, today what I wanted to do is focus on running three treatments on three different colonies all at the same time, just to kind of show people that you can achieve many, many treatments uh, over a short period of time throughout all your colonies. And we actually have beekeepers that do that with up to 30 colonies with one unit. And I have one beekeeper in upstate New York. He's got 100 colonies. He only has two units. Uh, they've become very efficient at the process. Uh, and the gentleman in New York, upstate New York, actually uh, him and his partner got to where they're doing five or six treatments a day. And with good weather, 15 to 18 days, three times a year, they have terminated the roar mite in their hives. Wow. And because it's all organic, they're seeing triple or more honey production. It's simply because um, I myself and many beekeepers don't believe in using pesticides. And with pesticides, you actually, uh, bees can become anemic and sick from the chemicals. And the varroa mites are actually evolving to where the pesticides have very little effect on right, them. So, right. uh, it's going to be an exciting day. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, we'll do a good job shooting the video so people can see how this works, how to go along, and possibly use it as sort of like an educational tool for whenever they want to do the treatment with their unit. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, cool. So we'll let everybody watch along as we do this. Okay. The next step is you take an existing super or even an empty super. That's to ensure that you got some weight on here to seal the insulation board. Okay, that's just to hold it down really. Just to hold it in place. Okay. Now, in the event that you don't have that available, you can take some simple bricks, a couple of them, and put them on here and just let this vent to atmosphere. Okay. Either way will work. Okay. I like you using the supers because typically every beekeeper has one. Sure, and the bees will just go inside of there. Right. Okay. So now we're going to install the super. And so if you had honey in here, just to clarify, say this is full or mostly full or partially full of honey or nectar, it's safe to put that on there. It's not going to hurt anything. Absolutely safe. Okay. Your wax actually softens at 123 degrees. Okay. It melts at 142 to 144. We're only experiencing 106 degrees and that's primarily in the high body. Right. In testing, what we've seen vented up through here was 80 degrees, 80 to 85 degrees. Because we're we're moving air, we're not in a static condition like an oven. Right. We're drawing air in from the outside, venting it out the top of the hive. Okay. So one other little thing is this piece too, right? We'll talk about that in just a second. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on top of this. Correct. All right, and then we're ready to slide this in. Correct. Okay. So we're going. So this is a 10 frame unit. There's also an eight frame unit available. Yes. And I tried to build a universal unit, but there was just too many variables in, involved. And the eight frame and the 10 frames for the appropriate box worked perfectly. Okay, so now we have this stick here. So what exactly is this stick? What, what this is, what stick is does do? is the issue is our boxes from an insulation factor are only a 0.4 R-rated insulation. So if you look at this under a thermal image, they vent temperature. Right. So what we're doing is we install this like so. You'll notice that this hole is smaller than the hole that was in the insulation board. Right. So as this warms up, we're drawing air in around this hole right here, venting it out through the hole in the insulation board. And that way we have moving air to make sure that we have oxygen for the bees. Because okay. if you oxygen starve the bees, like any other mammal, they're gonna die. Okay. 
So now we just need to plug it in. Now this have is slightly different because we don't have the end pieces on here. Okay. So, so I always recommend that, that you keep some uh, carpet tape handy and you tape the ends because probably won't have a factor here with this hive, but on real strong hives, they will actually push this stick out. All right, so here's a couple pieces of tape. We're gonna tape down this uh, board, the entrance blocker. And that's just because the bees are capable of moving it out of the way, really, right? They are capable of pushing it out. Okay, so we're just gonna secure that in place and we'll set this aside. And then, so next, what are we gonna do with the sensor? Okay. The next thing we're going to do is install the sensor. It has a guided slot so that you just rotate it in the uh, other coupler section. Okay. It will push in when it hits the slot and basically you screw the cap on. So you've made it where we basically can't screw it up, right? You cannot screw All it right, up. All right, good. Let me do that then. I like things I can't screw up. All of us do. <laughs> we tried to make the design right. just as complete as possible. All right, so we've got, this is the unit going in, this is the sensor, and then this is the plug that goes to the actual plug. Right. So what we have here is a three splitter. So this way we could potentially run three at one time. And so just out of curiosity, uh, in terms of electricity usage, you know, can we run three units off of one extension cord? Oh, absolutely. The unit only draws 220 watts. So you can actually, in remote locations, have a thousand watt generator and run three or four units at the same time. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in and what are we gonna to expect to see? What you're gonna see, go ahead and plug it in, is you're gonna see a series of flashing lights. Okay. What that is, is the number of programs that I wrote into the code on the controller. That way, if I ever get anyone back, I can tell if the program was correct and up to date. Okay. Now, when you first plug it in, what you're seeing is what we call winter warmer mode. Okay. Now, up north in the winter time, we actually take weak hives, slide this unit in, and just plug it in. When you go to 90 degrees in the hive body, the queen lays eggs based off temperature. Sure. You will no longer have a cluster. They actually consume less food. So consequently, as long as you have ample food to start with, the thing is, bees can survive at minus 40, but their metabolic rate goes up 500% to create heat to keep the queen alive. When that happens, they die off during the winter prematurely. So if you provide a warmer mode for it, you produce bees. We actually uh, have small hives that are weak that turn into real strong hives by spring. You can see warm days, bees coming out on their maiden flights. It's just wonderful. And this has been confirmed with the scientists, the University of Delaware and others. And it's a proper way to check your bees. If you see they're in trouble, bingo, slide it in. They'll get healthy again. Okay. So, so now, right, right now we're on winter warmer mode. Okay. You press the mode button right here, nice and firmly. How long do you hold that for? About three seconds. Okay. Now what you're just gonna see now is this blue LED is flashing. Okay. That means we are raising the temperature in the high body. Okay. And that can take at 70 degrees as long as 25, 30 minutes. In the 80s and 90 degrees, it can take six to eight minutes. Okay. Everything's based off it ambient because of the R rating of the high bodies. Sure, and it's about probably 85 degrees out right now here in Florida, uh, just so people know what we're dealing with. And we should see a short time period before we go to mite mode. Okay, and so we're gonna see the, the blue light flash, and then once it reaches the internal temperature it's after, it's going to do what? It's gonna change to a green flashing light. Okay. At that point in time, you remove the stick, allow the bees to come and go freely, and we actually have a built-in timer with the controller. It will time out in two and a half hours. And the reason we're at two and a half hours is that ensures that we kill the mites under the cap brood. Okay. No other product out there will do that. Temperature is the only thing that'll do it. Okay. Now, the beauty of that is within three days, the bees will smell the decomposing mite under the cap brood. They will uncap that brood, remove the larvae with the mites attached to it, clean the cell, and allow the queen to start laying again. 
Now people go, well, I don't want to lose my larvae. That larvae is no good. If it's it's got infected mites. with viruses. It will be anemic and probably had a deformed wing. Consequently, all it's going to do is consume honey. You'll get no work out of it, whether it's a nursery or worker bee or drone or whatever. Okay. So then after we remove this stick. And when you say remove the stick, are you saying just to pull it back slightly or no, take it off? Take it completely off. Okay. Now at cooler temperatures, we do recommend that you put a standard closure stick on. Okay. Because you're in 70, 75 degrees, what we've experienced with other beekeepers, they try to do this on a windy day. It'll suck the cold air right in. Well, you get blast of cold air in there, and then it's cycling back to warming. Right. And then back to the set temperature and back and forth. So that extends the time period. Okay. But you can put a standard closure stick on there. Bingo. It'll hold that set temperature. It'll time out. And then you're completely done. Okay, great. So what we're going to do now, basically, is just set these other two colonies up. So we have the treatment running on all three. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, watch, let you let everybody watch along as we now, do that. Now, one warning. Sure. You got to practice due diligence about this green light. Okay. Because if you go off and the bees accidentally clog this hole right here. You cut off the oxygen, you can kill the bees in a hive. Okay, so this isn't like a set it and walk away type of thing. This is no. maybe like a keep an eye on it type of situation. Right. Okay. I recommend beekeepers, you know, get a glass of tea and pull up a chair. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with sitting there watching your girls, right? That's right. That's what we got into this for. That's in the first why place. we enjoy it so much. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All awesome. righty. Great. All right, so. That. You got your staple gun? I do. It's sitting uh, right over yonder. This is really easy peasy when you're not talking. Yes, it is. See the center.
Now don't be alarmed. The bees will naturally beard this box up because okay. they are trying to drive the temperature down. So they're literally doing what they're supposed to do. Right. They're just doing it, you know, trying to defeat what we're doing. And that's one reason I'm not a proponent of screen bottoms is they allow cool air in when you don't want it. The bees will control this temperature, I mean, right to within half a degree of 94.5 in the high body. It doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees outside. Okay. They will beard the box, drive that temperature down. They will bring water in. They will place it in open honey cells, and they will actually stand over it and flap their wings and air condition the inside of the box. Okay. So uh, some people have asked, uh, what is the best time of day to do this? Don't ever do it at night. Why is that? Well, here's what will happen. In darkness, the bees will gather on the front, say if you're doing it right at dusk, or at nighttime when you remove the stick, they will actually come out and try to beard the box anyway, but they'll end up on the ground. And if you're out there walking around and checking this, you're gonna step on your bees and kill them. I see. And if you use a flashlight, they gonna immediately come to the light and sting you. Sure. Okay, so what time of day do you recommend doing this? Early morning and rest Ooh. of the daylight. Okay. Make sure your ambient temperature is above 70 degrees or higher. Okay. Just due to the fact that we're gradually raising this temperature, and if it's not 70 or above, we're not gonna obtain the, you know, the mite kill temperature. Okay, and is there a temperature that's too hot? Like here in Florida, it gets to be 100 degrees outside, so is it potentially too hot to do this ever? I've actually tested these. I built an oven and put over the hives and tested dead mite kills at 120 degrees. So the 100, 120 degrees was the temperature outside the that colony? outside the box. And this treatment was still running on the inside? That treatment was still running on the inside. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, we're going to let this uh, sort of do its thing and we're going to watch it as we go along. So we also, we have with us today a FLIR thermal camera. So as the unit reaches its internal temperature and we remove this block, we're going to go ahead and look at the colonies and watch with the FLIR camera what temperature is coming out of the colony so we can verify that it's doing what it says it's and, doing. And keep in mind, and Dennis, you and I have talked about this. I had a meeting with the USDA at uh, the Georgia Convention last fall. The losses in Florida are running 75 to 80 percent per year. The reason for that is y'all never have a cold enough temperature in the wintertime for the mite to go dormant. Right. So looking at the weather conditions here, you're probably going to need to monitor your hives. And in the rest of the country, we recommend three times a year. Okay. Uh, in the spring, 30 days after mm -hmm. pollen flow in august when the mite population peaks and then in october to ensure you don't have any mites the rest of the winter you're probably going to need to treat four times a year here probably okay. every 90 to 120 days okay great all right well so far we've seen amazing results with some of the other colonies we've treated here so we expect to see the same thing here so and today um we're gonna sit back and watch our girls awesome let's do that all right thank you all right lynn so where are we at now well, right now, uh, the temperature is approaching the uh, mite kill point, which the blue flashing light will go off. The green flashing light will come on. And at that point in time, the special closure stick that we furnish with every kit, you have to practice due diligence. You need to grab a chair and watch your bees. You remove that stick and allow the bees to come and go freely. Okay. And the controller is accurate enough that it will maintain that mite kill temperature of 106 degrees for two and a half hours and automatically shut down. Wait about 15 minutes after that, you can slide the unit out and then actually count the dead mites and hive beetles on the white aluminum plate. Okay. And that'll give you an indication as far as, you know, how many mites are in your hive and then like we've done in testing is we install sticky boards and monitor them a 72 hour count uh, sometimes uh, three days later and always get a six day count okay. we've seen counts as high as uh, 1200 1500 on an initial kill wow. which probably saved that hive and then another fallout of a thousand in six days now you think about it the honeycomb and the brood has 5,000 cells in it and uh, that gives the queen an opportunity to lay 1,500, 2,000 eggs a day in sales 
that are not mite infested. Right. And the hive will explode with new bees when you take the mite out of the pitcher. So now once we've taken the closure stick off, mm -hmm. we can pay a little less attention to things? You can leave, you can go work with other bees, you can go to lunch, you can take the afternoon off. Okay. I mean, it's, uh, the, it's an industrial grade ISO 9001 controller. The people at manufacturing are also aerospace certified for products they furnish to the space industry, primarily aircrafts and military, which we don't know where they're going in the military. They're not going to tell us, and we don't really want to know. Sure. But yes, uh, at that point in time, you remove the stick, and uh, if you want to work with some of the other girls, that's fine. Check on them. I'll, Go get some lunch, just be back in two and a half, three hours later to inspect the uh, mic kill. Okay, and then once we do that, we're going to slide the unit out, put everything back together, and that's it. Remove the insulation board. A lot of beekeepers, uh, especially people who only have three to five hives, will purchase extra sensors so that they only put it in one time. Okay. Then beekeepers are frugal. I've got a customer with a hundred hives and he refused to buy any extra sensors. He said, I'll take it out and put it in every time. Sure. I mean, it gives the beekeepers a choice. Okay. Awesome. This one's got a green light on. And we are at the temperature. Green light and green light okay so they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing so we're going to remove the closure sticks i'm going to give you the honor dennis okay so keep... this this bearding is this normal that is natural okay the bees are actually trying to drive the temperature down now the beauty of it is internally they actually turn this into a convection oven. Oh, they're just distributing all and that And that way air. you end up with a beautiful, even temperature throughout the inside of the hive body, even in the corners and everything. So we get probably a 95 to 100% mite kill. Wow, amazing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove the closure sticks now so the bees can breathe and, and do what they need to do and come and go freely. And then uh, pretty much from here, it's just going to be letting to the, to the end of the treatment, right? Yeah, we're going to go have lunch. Awesome. I like the sound of that. I like to eat. Me too. So I uh, just want to kind of ask a couple questions here about what's going on. So now that we've removed the closure stick, we're seeing all of these bees coming out and bearding up on the outside. And maybe to somebody that's never seen this before, this might seem a little alarming. It can be, but it's a natural occurrence. And if you've ever had bees, if you're a new beekeeper, you would probably be alarmed. If you've had bees for years, at higher ambient temperatures, you get 100 degrees or so. The bees are going to naturally beard and try to drive this temperature back down. Okay. So that works naturally. Also, if we focus in on this unit right here, you will notice there's a red flashing light. Okay. Do not be alarmed by that because here's what happens. The controller and the two sensors are so accurate. We get three or four tenths over that set point. It goes red flashing. So that's basically just saying it slightly went over the temperature that we're shooting for. And when the red light is flashing, the temperature or the, the unit is not heating anymore. It's just telling us that, hey, it's slightly over we're the temperature. Slightly over. We're Heat, not heating anymore. Heating has stopped. As soon as that temperature drops three, four, five tenths of one degree, you'll see a flashing group green light again. Okay, so it's like kind of like your air conditioner at home. When it reaches the temperature, it turns off. When it goes below a certain threshold, it turns back on. That is correct. Okay. Now the other thing, I'll, and we'll probably see some of this when we remove the units, is you got mites on bees and they're infected with viruses. Don't be alarmed if you have some dead bees. Okay. Because one, they were probably at the end of their life cycle anyway due to the varroa mite okay. or a virus. And what we've seen in uh, previous uh, videos and testing, in fact, we have one online, 
is we were able to actually inspect the unit and we were counting the mites. We had about 30 dead bees on there. We took a long sewing needle and turned the bee up and there was a dead mite directly underneath. Ah, okay. So it's it's not to be alarmed about, but for a, a new beekeeper, it might be alarming. I see, okay. Well, I'm glad that we were able to show that so people can see this is kind of the normal process uh, and dependent on the size of the colony. So we can see this colony is clearly larger than that colony because much stronger. bees. And we know that to be true because this colony arrived later than this one. So uh, essentially uh, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're gonna go have lunch now and we'll come back when it's all finished. One, one, one thing about the viruses, out of 270 units in the field that have been used multiple times, probably three, four, five times each already, over a thousand mite treatments, we've had reports of two queen losses. Okay. And what we suspect is the queen was infected with one of the viruses. Right. But that's a very low loss for the number of uh, mite treatments that have been Absolutely. Done. And one might even suggest in a thousand situations that two colonies would die because of queen loss anyway. Yeah. Okay. Or higher. Or, yeah, absolutely. All okay, right. Great. Man, it's going to be good to get some lunch. Yes, sir. Come back and do an inspection. All right. We're off to the races. This thermal camera shows the temperature live. So you can see here it's showing 105, 106, 107, 109. So that's the temperature that's coming out of the colony. 106, 107, 105. So that's exactly what we want to see is the temperature that's coming out of the hive. That's the bees basically trying to pull the temperature down. So they're pulling cooler air in and pushing hotter air out. And so here we see the hot air leaving out of the colony expected to be 106, 107. So it's doing exactly what we're expecting it to do. The bees are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the mites are all dying, <laughs> which is what they're supposed to be doing, dying. So anyway, this is just some, you know, some evidence that shows this thing is doing what it says it's going to do. been uh, about two and a half hours now so uh, we're getting to the end of what we expect the treatment to, to take so uh, so what should we expect to see now where are we at well where we're at now is we no longer have flashing lights on a controller okay so we have a solid light that tells us that two and a half hour cycle is complete so now we're going to remove the insulation board the beekeeper has an option to leave the thermistor sensor in the hive body on the top of the brood frame or remove it. Okay. I mean, that's it. that's our option. So then we will be back complete. We're gonna unhook the sensor cable. Whether you remove it or not, you still wanna unhook it. And then we're going to slide the unit out and we're going, the top of the mic kill board is a high temperature paint and it's white and we're going to inspect that. We're going to look for mites, hive beetles from that aspect, and you can actually do a mite count at that point. Then we recommend that you use a sticky board or some, some ways of a mite count then over the next six, seven days to two weeks because the bees are going to continue to clean all the dead mites and hive beetles out of there. Right. And they're going to keep dropping them out. And as they clean the cells, then every egg that that queen lays is gonna turn into a bee. So the warning here at this part is you gotta monitor your hives 
because they are going to explode with bees because a good queen will lay 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. Right. Well, what's the time frame on that before it turns into a bee? Sure, 21 days. Yeah, in 21 days, you're going to start seeing 1,500 to 2,000 more productive bees in the hive. And the issue with that is they run out of room. What do they do? Swarm. They swarm. Right. Now, that's a great problem to have. Yes, sir. But you need to monitor after you do a mine kill. Okay, so basically you want to look at about the two-week mark to really start seeing that explosion in population Correct. and basically super your colonies, make sure you're on top of equipment, and make sure they're not taking off on you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because a uh, classic example, I was traveling a lot last year. We had an early spring in February in upstate South Carolina. I'd get home. Boom. I actually had one hive that swarmed out seven times. Wow. I lost that one. <laughs> just sure. in that, in bed, I mean, it's just something that occurs naturally. Yeah. And I even had a local friend of mine was throwing supers on as fast as he could. Now, I have pictures on the website and have them available with beekeepers last year that, you know, took the opportunity to use the unit. In the first week of June, one beekeeper had seven supers full of honey. Wow. My biggest was six. And I tell you what, I was as scared as I've ever been on a stepladder trying to football <laughs> without toppling that hive. I've over. seen pictures back in the olden days of the old timers leaning, le leaning ladders up against hives to, yeah. to climb up the top and take the top box off. So hopefully we'll be to those days again. Yeah, and I had beekeepers had fewer hives and tripled their honey sales. Wow. And that's just, it's a thing of beauty. I mean, it's what we so much enjoyed 25, 30 years ago and for many years prior to that. Right. So we'll, uh, we'll go do the uh, removal and uh, start counting some mites. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you. All right. So first Work. step, we're going to go ahead and undo the sensor or we should unplug it first, I'm guessing. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and unplug it. So right now we have two lights on. What does that signify? Cycle's over with. We got a solid green and a solid blue. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for. Okay, great. So we're going to unplug this, kill the power. We're going to go ahead and undo the sensor. And we're just going to leave these sensors in. Uh, there's really no need to take them out since we have additional sensors. We'll just keep one in each colony and just leave it there. And it makes it a lot simpler with each setup. Okay. You'll raise up the super. I'll slide the insulation sheet out. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to uh, actually not use the super because we're not quite ready for it yet. Okay. Gentle with our babies. Yep, and I put this on upside down. Beautiful. Beautiful. All put back together. Easy Just peasy. Like so we'll go along and do the next one. You will always want to make sure you've disconnected that sensor. Okay. Because we have started furnishing longer cables just in case somebody makes this mistake. If you leave it hooked up in the earlier versions, you get about three quarters of the way out and it's like, Oops, it won't come all the way out. Ah, I see. And you can you can agitate the bees that way. We want to stay calm and work slow with our bees and they, okay. they won't get agitated. So we're just gonna slide it out nice and easy. Yep. 
and we're gonna take this back over and take a count of what what's on the board to look at right yep all right So we've got some dead bees on here. So is, is that a surprise? No, typically what you're gonna find is, and for the size of the hives, this is a small number of bees that have died. Okay. They normally are infected with one of 11 different viruses that mites transmit. And consequently, in a lot of cases, you can actually, sometimes you see that popped off that bee right there that's gonna be a dead mite. So you're gonna have phoretic mites that are attached to the bees and they were really right at the end of their life cycle due to the roar mite. Okay. You'll find a lot, sometimes a lot of mites. There's some there, 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 here, 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 and here. Because the mites, when the temperature starts going up, they start running looking for a place to hide. Right. So here we've got a mite here. This is a varroa mite. Correct. And here's another one right here. There's another one there, there's there, one. there. So we have several mites on here. Uh, and these bees, we weren't expecting to see a huge number of mites because these were recently purchased from, you know, uh, a commercial beekeeper mm -hmm. that, that did chemical treatments a long time ago. So, but the evidence is still there. It absolutely is. You take probably the 35, 40, or 50 that are on here, and a multiplication rate as high as eight times that, over 20 something days, you know, 60 days from now, that right hive would be just loaded with roar mites. But this hive right here is good to go until August. Really? Yep. Okay. They'll still pick up a few pollinating, but if you read the studies, 80% of the mites that you find on alcohol and sugar roll washes are phoretic mites, and they just live off the bee until both of them die. Or the bee, I mean, or the mite will hop to another bee. Right. The brood frame is where you have to terminate the mites. There's a good number of mites on the edge here. Mm -hmm. And so like you were saying, they're probably trying to get away and they can't find a place to go. And it also shows the proof that we have a consistent temperature level throughout the inside of the hive body. If that was not the case, we'd have nothing along the edges and you'd only see a concentration probably in the center if that was where the temperature mite kill was at. But because you're seeing it throughout the entire board, even under the front flapper, we get everything in that hive body. It's impressive, I must say. It's nice to uh, have met a beekeeper that happened to be an engineer and could do something <laughs> about it. <laughs> well, the frustration of losing 21 hives, and I refuse to use pesticides, prompted me to go to work. All right. Well, thank you. I thank really you. appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate the time here in Florida. It's been great. We're all doing something to, to you know, on our journey to save the bees. Uh, I think you've maybe taken it a step further, so. And we'll keep growing, keep getting wider acceptance, and uh, it looks good. So well, one thing, uh, you know, I want to mention is, you know, for those folks out there that are either thinking about purchasing a unit or purchased a unit, um, you know, citizen science is what we're after here. Correct. O oftentimes, universities and, you know, certain people are bought and paid for. So what we're after is real research and real data. And so what we're asking for people is if you're, you're going to purchase a unit to do your mite counts prior, do your mite counts, do your mite counts during, and do your mite counts afterwards, and publish that information, whether it be on Facebook, at your local bee club. You know, maybe you can provide a place for people. Email to... me with testimonies. We have uh, several of them already. Uh, the testimonies, the, the greatest asset about this product is the beekeepers. Right. They keep coming back with ideas and things that they have done that works. Right. I mean, just from warming a hive during the winter to warming it when they do their nuke transfers due to cold weather. I mean, uh, it's just amazing 
that the people that have bought the product and have seen the results and they reach back out to me and go, did you know this is the results of doing this? I know that firsthand. When yeah. I got my unit, I was so excited to call you and tell you about my results. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's what prompted this this um, sit down and get together. So it's, uh, it's definitely fascinating. And we're just super excited that there's an option now for people that don't want to put chemicals in their hive. And they can actually have healthier bees than the people out there putting chemicals in their hive. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and there's studies out of Europe where they started experimenting with temperature going as far back as 2002. The USDA did a one-year study in Vermont, New Hampshire. It was kind of archaic. What they did is they actually took a high body, transferred brood frames in there, and raised the temperature, and established that, yes, you killed the roar mite and the trachea mite. Nobody built a product. <laughs> I mean, the documentation was there in Europe and the U.S. And uh, it's, hey, th this works, but uh, how will we accomplish that? And how we come up with a mobile unit where you can treat multiple hives? I mean, right. if a hobbyist has 10 hives, one unit, a few extra sensors, and they are going to be some happy bees. When you figure the cost of, uh, you know, the, the mite treatments that are currently available, the strips, you know, if you have to put two of those in your colony or four of those in your colony every single time you treat, and you treat year in, four, year out. five, six, seven times a year, uh, you know, the cost of that can be quite a bit. So, and then the other aspect, a lot of beekeepers don't sit down and really look at their cost per hive. If you add up, Three supers, wax frames, hind body, inner lid, lid. I'll actually pay $135 for package bees or $185 for a good strong nukes. You're $450 investment per hive. Yeah, absolutely. And at $299, you can make some really strong bees like we enjoyed 30 years ago. Right. Yeah, and you know, I always tell people, you know, some of the backyard beekeepers, maybe they don't have a lot of hives. It's always a good idea maybe to get with someone else and, and combine your purchasing power and then oh, you, absolutely. Just, you know, share the unit. So. I mean, if you got a couple of hives, two or three hives, and a good friend of yours has got three or four hives, you're talking $150 right. to take care of the roar mite and hive beetles and trachea mites and I mean. Well, don't tell the manufacturer, but I'd pay anything to get rid of Varroa without using chemicals. But shh, don't tell the manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want the price to go up. No, sir. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting me to Florida. I'm glad you came. <laughs>